Well, hey everyone, welcome back to our channel all about living in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I am Jeff Edmiston and this is my co-host, Ruthie, Ruthie Buck. Ruthie Buck. Sorry, I'm That's trying okay. to take your part. That's good. <laughs> works, works good. We, we both know your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so today we are going to be diving a little bit deeper. We're going to be looking at some of the, I guess, less glamorous um, points to possibly living in Fredericksburg. Um, with that, um, you know, it's kind of important to know the good and the bad and the ugly from somewhere you may be looking to move. Yeah, every place has good points, every place has bad points, and people always want to know what is the bad, and it's good to know before you get here. First up, number one on the list of the worst things about living in Fredericksburg, Virginia is the traffic, the traffic congestion. Ask anybody, guarantee you 99% of them, that's going to be the first mm -hmm. thing they give you. So Fredericksburg, like any growing population, is going to have its share of, of traffic problems and we definitely have that, especially the I-95 corridor. That's just a beast. Yeah, so if you're if you are a daily traveler or traveling to work daily, it might be a little bit of a hassle. Actually, it could be a real hassle. <laughs> could be a lot of a hassle. <laughs> yeah, it could be a huge hassle actually, um, coming and going. But I mean, we put out videos every week, and in the near future, we're probably going to put out some tips and tricks for getting around some of that traffic. Absolutely, that is the plan. So let's talk about the public transportation for Fredericksburg. What public transportation? <laughs> just joking, just joking. We do have some. Um, we actually have the VRE, which is great for some people, but not everybody can get on that VRE to get to work. Um, we also have, I mean, we have a little bit of a limited transportation depending on what parts of Fredericksburg that you need to go to or what outlying areas you may need to go to. And when. Yes, yeah, and definitely when. I mean, we do have the Fredericksburg buses, but they only have certain locations that they stop at. So depending on where you need to go, you're probably going to need a car in this area. Yep, car dependent for sure. Speaking of cars, uh, if you're commuting, one of the options that you have, which we've talked about uh, in, in multiple other videos, but it is an option to keep in mind is the commuter lots, the slug lots, mm -hmm. as we, we like to say. You know, So consider car, car pooling and using those commuter lots to alleviate some of your pain on that I-95 traffic. You know, it's good to, to share the misery, mm -hmm. if you will. So. Mm -hmm. And actually, my husband, he is a, he uses the slug lots all the time. Actually, he drives, but he stops to pick people up. And after COVID and all of that, um, it, it, they were, it was a little sparse with some of the people, but it's actually starting to pick right back up again. All right, number three um, of the five worst things about living in Fredericksburg is the cost of living. So let's, let's put it in perspective. The cost of living in Fredericksburg is about 6% higher than the national average. That's actually come down a little mm -hmm. bit over the last couple of years. But where you really, really need to take things into consideration is cost of housing, because cost of housing here in Fredericksburg is about 26% higher than the national average. So, you know, if you're coming from some from some place that cost of living is more on the national par, this is going to be kind of a kind of a wake up call to you. Yeah, I mean, it's crucial that you kind of budget wisely, especially for this area. Um, I mean, I can think of numerous times that we've had people that have moved into this area that we've worked with past clients, and it's just a bit of sticker shock. Yet. I mean, it, it's all kind of relative um, to where you are as well, but there's several options for housing in the Fredericksburg area. Yeah, yeah, sticker shock, especially for people coming from like Texas, and parts of North Carolina, things like that. It's, it's a big night and day from where you might be coming from. Yeah, so yep. Eyes wide open. So next up, let's talk about the weather. We have, we do have such weather variability here. Um, actually, I mean, we have all four seasons. That could be a 
huge plus for someone or pro and then it could be a huge con or negative for somebody as well um, especially if um, you don't like cold weather yeah Ruthie and I both are warm <laughs> weather people about this time of year I start saying it's starting to get mm -hmm. cold it's starting to get cold I don't like to live anywhere where your face hurts when you walk outside and that happens here uh, so yeah. Ruthie's right we have all four seasons we do get some some really hot and humid summers so if that's if you're not used to humidity if you're coming from Phoenix or someplace like that to here humidity is going to be a big mm -hmm. eye-opener for you and conversely winters you know some some winters are really mild last winter super mild I mean really kind of a blip on the oh, radar yeah. maybe we I think maybe we had a heavy coat for two weeks maybe last winter yeah it was it was a really mild yeah. winter, which I was perfectly perfectly okay with uh, but we've also had winters where it's really really cold mm -hmm. and there's a whole lot of snow so we do get all four seasons maybe not consistently but we do get all four seasons it will be hot and humid and it will be cold in the winter well jeff's right it's never consistent i mean in virginia i swear i feel like you could wake up and you're all bundled up and you've got two shirts on and a jacket and by the end of the day you've shed all that and you've got short sleeves <laughs> we're, on we're in shorts <laughs> exactly <laughs> All right, so number five on our list is limited cultural amenities. So this really only applies if you're moving from a more metro area to here. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, Fredericksburg, from a historical culture standpoint, is second to none. I mean, this place is, is fabulous. The whole area around is just laden with history, and you, you can just dive into that as deep as you would like. But when it comes to other cultural amenities if you're coming from a metro area to here you're probably going to think this is quite limited mm -hmm. to where you're coming from if you're looking for i mean something that's bustling with like arts and entertainment um things of that nature you may have to travel a little bit not too far i mean dc has plenty and we're close to them but it's a little limited in this fredericksburg area yep limited really close to home yeah, I'm not, we're not saying this is a boring area. It's not by any stretch of the imagination. But again, comparatively speaking to a, a metropolitan area, a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Those are some of the downsides as we see it to living in the Fredericksburg area. For some people, they're not going to be downsides. They're going to be manageable trade-off. It's got a special, unique charm, magnificent amount of history, and it's just a great place to call home. I mean, it's definitely, it, it's a beautiful place to live. I have actually loved living here. Um, so if you all have any questions about living in this area, um, feel free to call us, text us, send smoke signals. Um, we would be happy to help um, in any way. And you can leave a comment if you'd rather do that. And don't forget to like this video subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video like ruthie said we're putting out videos just about every week all about living working and playing in fredericksburg <gasps> and we will see you in the next video in the next <laughs>